Now, what I want to focus on today is the word Nephilim here. Because one mistake a lot of people make is thinking that Nephilim just means giants. This abominable genetic deviation. But what if there was another deviation? Well, first of all, let's just go to the Book of Enoch and see what it says. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for themselves one, and they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them. And they became pregnant, and they bore great giants whose height was three thousand ells. And they began to sin against the birds, and the beasts, and the reptiles, and the fish, and to devour one another's flesh. Then the earth laid accusations against the lawless ones. Now if we go back to Genesis here, we read that the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. Now I want to really focus on corrupt here. The earth was corrupt in God's sight. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. And even before that verse here, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. This is very important generations. So there was a whole lot of talk of corruption here. And I find this very interesting because God was also mad with the animals, the birds and the plants. But what had they done? Now putting two and two together. Remember how I said in Enoch chapter 7, the giants began to sin against the birds and the beasts and the reptiles and the fish. What we have here is a human skull and a Neanderthal skull. As you can see, the Neanderthal skull is vastly different from the human skull. Its bone structure is denser, stronger, you can tell it's, it's more solid, its teeth are stronger. And I really wonder, could this be a Nephilim? The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on earth. All flesh. Now, there is this thing called the Dead Sea Scrolls from around the 3rd century BC. Now, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there is this one most interesting book called the Book of Giants. Now, what they found was little fragments, and what they came out with is this most interesting story. 200 angels who choose animals on which perform unnatural acts, beasts of the field, from every animal, from every bird, for miscegenation. Miscegenation. It means crossbreeding. It means taking different species and mixing them together to make something new. It is very curious how in Enoch, the giants began to sin against the birds and the beasts and the reptiles. The Book of Giants seems to call it miscegenation. Now let's look at some Egyptian gods. The Egyptians had this big obsession with these half animal, half humanoids. Now, if we move over to Greek mythology, this is a centaur, another half-human, half-animal creature. This right here is some of the Babylonian gods. Once again, we see a half-humanoid, half-animal type creature here. This is another picture of a Sumerian god. As you can see, there is a pattern here. Half-human, half-animal beings who rule as gods. Now what's absolutely interesting about this is that everybody originated from the same area. This right here is the Tower of Babel built by the guys in the time of Nimrod. When they erected this, God came down and saw what they had done and saw that they were in direct opposition to his command of being fruitful and multiplying. God confuses their language and now they are split into five different nations, each going their separate different ways. Now the Phoenicians are the Canaanites. In Numbers 13:33, we hear about the sons of Anak, who are literal giants, descendants of giants. Now the Egyptians also come from the Tower of Babel, and today this is what we are finding in Egypt. Now let's look at Babylon here. Again, they originated from the Tower of Babel, and before you know it, we have half-human, half-animal gods. Greece, of course, same thing. The mermaid mythology comes from Greece, which originates in the Tower of Babel. You see, the angels had done a lot more than just make giants on the earth. They had quite literally corrupted all flesh by crossbreeding different species and making abominations. You see, people always wonder how we get these different aliens and different creatures and different mythologies. Well, it all seems to originate from the same place. The Tower of Babel is what happened in that tower. What happened with this tower for all these different demigods to appear? You see, 
the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on earth. It really makes you wonder whether or not the people who built the Tower of Babel started looking in places they maybe shouldn't.